Hey, welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards the singularity. I'm Nathan Waters. And I'm Tristan Grace. Welcome to High 45. Hells yeah. And, and we're, we're in. Real, real, real. Episode 14. Mm-hmm. Real, 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 real. Week ending the May 10th 9th. of the 5th. Oh yeah. May 9th. May 9th. Oh. Indeed. Well, it's, it's just changed over because this is very late at night. Indeed. Uh, anyway. Yeah, no, what, what, we, what are we talking about this week? Oh, yeah, 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 it's Facebook again. It's all Facebook again. Mm. It's going to be Facebook the next... But we're not going to talk about Facebook this time. The... No, I don't know. I want to... Oh, you do want to? Okay. Yeah, I've got nothing else to talk about. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, what have the three of you got? Um, uh, there's Twitter's introduced uh, this thing called annotations. Twinnotations. Mm-hmm. I want to talk a bit about the Facebook. They're calling it their personalization pilot program. And then just a, a TED talk by uh, Stephen Wolfram, behind Wolfram Alpha. Hells yeah, they sound good. How about yours? Uh, my ones are about Google just bought this company called Bump Top 3D. And uh, this is their multi-touch desktop display. That's pretty cool. Uh, the independent game publishers just released this bundle and uh, that was pretty awesome. They had, uh, the, they've made a lot of money by just asking people to uh, pay whatever they like. And then the last one, which I'd like to finish up on, is a, it's called the Social Media Revolution and all the things about that. Epic video. Oh, really? Definitely watch it. Oh, cool. Let's jump in. Good. I'm gonna start. Yep. Alright. This, uh-huh. this, this is a boring story to start with though. Twinnotations. I can't even pronounce it. Anyway, what is it? Twinnotations. Okay, what Twitter's doing is they're releasing their annotations feature. Which, the reason I thought this was pretty cool is it looks a little semantic webby like. I'm not sure if they're actually using the standard RDF, um, which is the, the standard semantic web data language, whatever. But, what they're trying to do is translate every single tweet into standardized format that are machine readable. So they've got a tweet here and this is guy, just somebody saying, you know, he's watching The Vampires of Venice. And so it's got, you know, TV episode, dash, blah, blah, blah. Episode, The Vampires of Venice series, Doctor Who, air date, 8th of May, 2010. And so if they can actually automatically go through all the tweets on Twitter mm. and do this uh, analyzation process and actually split it up. How do they get that? How do they actually work, know that that's from Doctor Who and that's from the 8th of May, 2010? That's where they get it. It's semantically linked. You'd have to, you'd pull out uh, The Vampires of Venice, you'd look it up and you'd be like, okay, that's Doctor Who. Shit, when did that episode air? That was so what? On the Twitter's connecting, or what? What are they actually doing? Like, I, I, I must admit, I'm not. Well, the, the article's very. It doesn't tell you anything. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> they haven't released it. They're, they're working on it. Oh, okay, cool. But it looks like it, it is semantically linked, and if they can do that, it means they can link every single tweet to every other single tweet, and machines can go through and read it perfectly. Well, it can see who's watching Great. Doctor Who right now, rather than actually saying I'm watching Doctor Who. They can. You can just say I'm watching the Vampires of Venice. Vampires of Venice, and then that can be like, you search for Doctor Who, and that's what you get back, is Doctor Who. Yeah. Yeah. But, cooler stuff. Yeah, but that, that's the beginning they thing. They can do that with awesome. Twitter search already. No, they can't. You search for Doctor Who. Right? It wouldn't turn off the Vampires of Venice. Oh, if they haven't got Doctor Who in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And that's what they're doing here with this. Yeah. yeah. That is pretty epic. But they can show all the interlinking connections between mm. every single tweet. And on top of that as well, which is something that I've wanted to do for so long, is like dig into the API and actually work out a recommendation engine for Twitter. And you'll be able to do that a lot more simply with this because it'll show you what they're interested in in um, machine-readable language. You won't, yeah. have to, you won't have to go through and do your own analyzations on the text. You can just uh, do it itself. Yeah. It can actually say what it's all about and what it's doing. Yeah, yeah. that should be. That's kind of cool. Like, I, I like that idea. That with the search right now, it's a little bit odd. If you can actually know what it is when you say the Vampires of Venice, it knows it's a Doctor Who episode, it knows it's there, so it can actually yeah. put it into your feed. You can actually say that's what people are talking about. I like that. I like that. You can actually put that into Facebook. You can put it into anything. Like, I say all this stuff, like, just I was watching TV tonight and, oh my God, that guy on Get Up was crazy. And then it would know that was about Q&A. Yeah. And then it would put it in. Because it was Q&A. And see what you can do that later on. It's also have, like, a little, you hover over and you can, like, click for more tweets about Doctor Who yeah. or, or find out more about this, this particular episode the guy's talking about. Well, it, it, it gets the data actually behind the data that's there because it's like only 140 characters but you know you get all of the stuff behind it like say the Vampires of Venice that you've got Doctor Who behind it or any type of information. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. That's kind of cool. Just they can't, they're not allowed to go back through my like Facebook tweets because like, or Facebook status updates because damn the, the stuff there it's just going to have douchebag, douchebag, <laughs> douchebag, hashtag douchebag for me Indeed. the whole time. It's going to be great. But then hopefully they have it with an actual standard semantic markup and not their own proprietary stuff. I wonder if you could actually do it with just anything that you've tweeted. It could see the most common thing that you talk about. Like, you know, those stupid Facebook applications yeah, yeah. actually say that like, oh, you're awesome is the most, the word that I use most of the time. I, I don't know why. Well, so you want to go through and actually analyze. Yeah, and you can actually analyze what are you talking about the yeah. most. Douchebag. 
Anyway, <laughs> I thought I'd like it. Said it was a boring story. Ha! I laugh at you. <laughs> right. No, uh, the, the, one I've got, <laughs> the one I've got is uh, Woolfire, W-O-L-Fire.com has uh, released the Humble Indie Bundle where they've got seven games. I think it's seven games or is it six games? Not sure. Anyway, they're all um, uh, independent publishers. They're all independent games and they've released them online and you can download them and you can pay whatever you want. And they've, uh, cool. they've actually done this. They've actually made $682,000 Five hundred and eighty-seven dollars. Uh, Six hundred and eighty-two thousand five hundred and eighty-seven dollars. Got that mixed up. Sorry, but uh, yeah, from just releasing it for free, like you can literally pay nothing and just download them. But they're like, hey, if you want to do it, and then uh, there's all of these fantastic ways that you, if you don't want to pay the developers, you can actually just give to a charity. Really clean checkout system, and it's yeah. just incredible. It actually made that amount like, of money. I like how it's just all transparent. You can actually decide where you want it to go. Mm. Yeah, like specifically where you want the money to go. Split evenly, all to charity, all to developers, yeah. or customize and do a like percentage based thing. But this is I I think this brings up like a few important things that actually by releasing stuff for free that they've they've made and well nearly seven hundred thousand dollars off this thing by re making games yeah. and releasing them for free. That's Do you think they're more sustainable though, or is it just all hype? Like like you need the Nails, hype. Yeah, true. Like Nine Inch Nails has done a similar thing where they offered it for free, or you could pay whatever you want. But it was Radio only because of the, how well. amazing it was. Oh my god, they're releasing it for free. That I think they got the money. Hey. Huh? Yeah. If you could keep it going, I mean. Like it almost seems gimmicky. I, want, I, I don't know if it would happen on a large scale, or if it's just mm. a once-off. Like, if a oh, site was known for that, that you could get anything you wanted there for free, but you should also donate even individually to the developers, that could work well. It'd have to be. Quick what about the free uh, the free rider effect though? And you have that would happen though, but that's still publicity to other people.